Now we're recording. Hi, Mom. Hi, hon. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Well, I uh, I thought I think it would be so cool if we could record our car conversations because they're really <laughs> yes. stimulating and funny and. We can be like James Corden. Yeah. He's yeah. The taxi guy. Yeah. Well, the... Yeah. I mean, he does that. <laughs> I need a camera in my car. But yesterday we were talking about. Um, I think work... you can. Pro yes. You can probably get uh, mount your phone. Oh, oh, yeah. I need just a phone mount. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. So yesterday we were talking about uh, your journey with food. Yes. And what um, you discovered in your 60s and what how it led to your lifestyle since then. Um, yes. I think just in general, there's so many people going along in the world, not feeling good and not right. really understanding why. I agree. So I thought this could be an interesting conversation yeah. for everybody, but also for caregivers, because when you're taking care of someone else, you want to feel as good as you can. And that's something that I worry about as a senior is, yes, as long as I have control about what I'm eating, I'm pretty good. Yeah. But the, what happens when I go into assisted living or something like that and don't have that control and people don't see a medical reason for it. Right. Because so much of what we have going on, there's no medical evidence. And in preparation for this talk, I went through and looked at all my notes, um, my appointments with three allergists and my general practitioner. Wow. My, I was scoped. You know, I had an endoscopy. Um, I've had things stuffed down my nose. Uh, oh my gosh. You know, just so many things trying to figure out because I had one huge episode um, that triggered my saying, this is not right. I mean, I went out to dinner, a, a business dinner and um, ate my, and uh, it was a fish restaurant. Mm -hmm. And we had foods that I'd seen, I never felt like I had any reaction to them. Um, and when I got home that night, I felt like my throat was so tight mm. that I wouldn't, I felt like I needed to throw up, but I felt like I wouldn't be able to get it out of my, oh my throat. Gosh. And um, I laid on the couch with this feeling that I was just like, not well. Right. And I just, I was horrifying. And um, I actually slept, I, to the extent I slept, I slept in the living room in a sitting, more of a, you know, leaning positions mm -hmm. with my, you know, basically my head way above my stomach. Um, and it was like miserable. It was a terrible situation. That's scary. And <clears throat> so I, you know, I mean, I woke up the next morning and got in and went to work and I was still not in very good shape. Uh, but I don't, didn't have any allergies. I mean, I was like, not, there was no reason for it. Right. In a sense. Um, so then working back, what, what was happening at that time? And that was, I was in my sixties and I had had the braces removed from my teeth. And, um, at the time that I went into that situation with getting the braces on my teeth, because I felt like that would make me, you know, having nice teeth is, as you age, is really important for many reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and 
at that time I, that I got the braces on, I stopped eating bread because it was too hard to chew. I honestly do not understand how teenagers eat pizza and stuff. Cause They're that determined. was, <laughs> yeah, that was the first thing to go really was like the pizza salads were definitely out because you, I couldn't close my back molars. Wow. So it was not, a, I mean, I wasn't freaked out about it in particular, but I recall coming for Thanksgiving that year or some holiday for that year and serving mashed potatoes and mashed peas or whatever. <laughs> and you were like, is there any chance that we can get some food for people who can chew? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was like, well, reluctantly, yes. You know, so I planned a meal, but then my food really had to be kind of mashed up. Mm. And really vegetables were hard to eat. So all the vegetables tended to be pureed. I started drinking uh, smoothies at that point. And that um, was because of the braces, not the because braces. of the braces. Okay. Yes. That was the braces. Okay. Um, and I, you know, but I wasn't eating salads and I wasn't, you know, eating breads and I wasn't, there were a lot of things. I wasn't eating cereal, mm -hmm. you know, because basically I would get a bite in my mouth and then I couldn't close my mouth well oh enough. My gosh. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was like, I didn't feel sorry for myself. I was yeah. very pleased with what I was doing. And I was, I was losing weight, but I, you know, sorted it out so that I could eat. Right. Um, and um, so that was fine. And I was in good health and everything was fine. So then two years later, I got the braces removed. Mm -hmm. And... I started having, I did start having reactions before the braces were removed, but I, I actually, I actually did a, 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 this is my food log for wow. a short period of time. So I actually, this is while I still had the braces on. I still, I was eating soy chips and I was sticking them sort of in my mouth and eating the soy chips and I would have them with whatever lunch I was having, whatever soup I was having for yeah. lunch or whatever. And I noticed that, you know, I'd take a few bites and then I would cough. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would put the bag of chips to the side and I say, well, I'll finish those later. Cause believe me, I never had problems with chips. Yeah. Any kind, yeah. as you may recall. And uh, so at, like this happened a number of times and especially I had lunch meetings and I would have the chips with like one-on-one -on -one, uh, lunch meeting mm -hmm. and I would start coughing. So put the chips aside and carry on the meeting. Then I started noticing that I was having a similar reaction to oatmeal. Hmm. So I'd take a little packet of oatmeal and heat it up and I would right. do, and it was like, and then I would start coughing and there was one, and then I got the braces off. And so I couldn't wait to have a hamburger Yeah. in a bun Take a bite. You bite down and you eat your hamburger. I was so excited. Um, and I ended up actually taking the hamburger out of the bun because it was just too much, too many things going on. Uh -huh. and so I took it out of the bun and, and, and I've never had a, a hamburger in a bun since this time. Anyway, so that didn't work. And then I started noticing that I was having reactions to things and like peanuts. Do you know what Turkish delight is? Oh, it's like that white with the it's almond. gooey stuff. It's yeah. like, usually it's apricots and okay. yes, they put a powdery, they put powdered sugar on top usually. Okay. 
and at least in our culture, uh -huh. sort of a cultural appropriation perhaps, but you know, anyway, we put, tend to put uh, powdered sugar on there. Well, a friend from Turkey came back with Turkish delight and she had cut it up into little tiny bites, mm -hmm. little tiny bites, I mean, little tiny bites. Mm -hmm. And I took four of them and I went into a meeting and I popped one in my mouth on my way to the meeting started coughing and I popped another one into my mouth because I thought well that must have been an aberration right went down the wrong way let me get more yeah, in yeah. There. that's how it felt it felt yeah. like it went down the wrong way um I had four of them and by golly they were from Turkey I was going to eat them yeah and my colleague had a bottle of water oops excuse me let's we have to get rid of that Anyway, so I just, we were on a phone conference and I'm like, give me your bottle of water. And the guy's like, I drank out of it. And I'm like, I'm dying here. Yeah. I'm choking to death. Yeah. So I drank some water and managed to get it somewhat under control enough to finish the meeting. And I guess, well, that's the next one. So, okay, we've got peanuts, Turkish delight, oatmeal, Fruit shakes with milk and protein powder started making me cough. Salad dressings. Mm. A I had a hell of it at that meal where I got so sick. Mm -hmm. And then I had it again at your place. Mm -hmm. We went out for lunch and I thought, well, how bad can fish be? Right? Okay. Corn on the cob. I ate it one day. It was fine. I ate it the next time at your place, mm -hmm. I started coughing. So it started a lot of coughing and a lot of kind of with some things, a major recovery time. Wow. You know, and I just, I felt like, you know, I have to go lay down. Um, I just, I can't do this. And uh, so like after we had went out to lunch and I ordered the, the halibut and some other things too, I had it. I, you know, we got home, I was coughing. I did not feel well. And I knew in my head, it's going to be 24 hours before I recover from this. Wow. And then if I ate something else that triggered the same reaction, it would be another 24 hours. So I actually went in, I'd been scoped, I got scoped, they found nothing mm -hmm. in particular. My doctor decided it was um, acid reflux. So they put me on an acid reflux diet, okay. which by the way, is not what I'm on now. Okay. So, but when I got scoped, I, my a ger gerontologist said, or no, my uh, gastroenterologist, sorry, said, um, we don't use that anymore. We just tell people don't eat things that give you acid reflux. Okay. <laughs> it's not the acid. He said, it's not tomatoes that are giving this to you. So you knock yourself out. It's not lemons. It's not limes. You know, it's not, there's no food group that can be identified as giving people acid reflux. It's just their own bodies that react. Okay. So after that, I threw out that thing. You then threw out I the medicine? The, I wasn't on any med. Oh, yes. I did, was given medicine. Um, which, and I don't remember the name of it. Anyway, so I was on that. So I was on that for my general practitioner. Uh, but when, after I had, after I was, uh, went to the gastroenterologist, mm -hmm. he's like, I it wasn't changing my reactions. So the medication was not changing my reactions to the food. So I was like, okay. Uh, he, he said, it, and there are reasons why you wouldn't stay on it long term. There okay. are, um, because it, it's doing things to your body. And I don't remember exactly what it was, but I would rather not have that thing happening to me. I don't know. And a doctor said it's not going to work. 
he said, it, it, it's not working. It's not working. Okay. You, so the- I, I went in and I said, I'm having the reactions. I'm taking this medication. I don't know what. And he said, well, he ran a few little tests, but he said, you're going to have to go in and just get a real allergist to f- see if he can work with you or she can work with you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I said, fine, because he didn't, any of the blood tests that he ran, he couldn't find anything that of the obvious ones. Um, so, you know, he was just like, but forget the medication. I don't see any evidence of acid reflux here. Okay. So um, I went off of that medication and then I came to visit you and I had corn and I started coughing mm-hmm. and I'm, and you said, go see an allergist. So I made an appointment. God, I'm so smart. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to make an, an appointment. She'll never shut up about this. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> <make an appointment. laughs> True story. So anyway, I made the appointment. On the plane ride home, I was starving. No cereal. I couldn't felt I didn't feel like I could have cereal because that made me cough. Mm-hmm. I there were so many things that I, I didn't know what I could have. And I was in an airport. I bought a gorgeous navel orange. Beautiful. And I'm like, this could, this is gonna be all right. Right. I'm sure this is gonna be all right. I get on the plane. I peel it. I take the first bite. I start coughing. And I'm like, I'm crying and coughing because I'm like, I am so hungry. Yeah. And by this time I had lost some weight. I I mean, I'd already lost weight because of the braces and now avoiding food things. I was losing weight. Um, and So when I went into the doctor and we went through everything that to the extent that I knew it, you know, she was like, okay, this is sounding a lot like a mold allergy, Hmm. not, you know, a, a, a reaction to, you know, mold and like candida. Okay. Um, so she, actually gave me two, uh, there was printouts that she'd copied of basically the same diet, uh, which I, I also, I, you know, anyway, where we're avoiding, avoiding mold things. So like peanuts are grown in the ground. One of the things that turns out about mold and anybody who's dealt with black mold or anything like that knows this, you just have to get ri- you just have to get rid of the thing that it's in or on. Okay. It's, you so like basically, if you're highly sensitive, you have to not eat those kinds of things. So, peanuts are the they grow on the ground. They're moldy. They get moldy. Hmm. Um, apparently, much to my surprise. Oranges were on the list of, of, of a no, don't eat food because apparently the mold on the outside of the orange, when you cut into it or try to open it, it goes into the flesh. But the other thing was that there was something about the sweetness of it too, that I was having some reaction to because hmm. I had that reaction to pineapple and raw pineapple. Now I'm not even sure at, to this day whether it's the same for cooked pineapple, but you know, basically, again, we were having breakfast <laughs> <laughs> and pineapple was in the salad. So I had a bite of pineapple, started coughing. Mm-hmm. And again, my primary reaction as a start would be coughing. And then I noticed basically I can't tell you if it's 100% of all vinegars, because I think it may not be, but certainly balsamic vinegar, even a small little drop of it will set me off to coughing. Which was super trendy. Oh, I had, in fact, I was given 
vinegars out as presents. Yeah. Along with, you know, a complimentary mustard right. that I had dragged back from France. Yes. You know, I mean, that was my, that was my thing. Yeah. As you may recall that and baking bread, I was a known for my baking yeah. And uh, on this list, on this diet, this um, mold and yeast free diet, um, which is relatively common, you'll, you'll hear of a lot of people that are, that do this, um, you know, all of that stuff and cantaloupe also was on the list wow. again, because of the mold on the surface. So you know, basically I went through a whole bunch of, I did a three different um, allergy tests, you know, and it really, it just said, we're not seeing the food allergy. Um, you know, we're, we're, that's, that's not, that's not what's, we don't know, but we don't think that food allergies are implicated in right. what's going on. And I even had a scan of my brain, you know, and they, but they did notice I have a deviated septum and they're like, uh, your brain is so beautiful. Yeah. Well, they didn't say that. Oh. They said it's full of mucus. Oh, God. <laughs> your, your head, you know, you have all those sinuses and stuff. Yes. Like that. So they just said, well, you got a lot of mucus up there. And uh, so, well, that's great. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, and then I, my allergist actually wanted to treat me for COPD and she put me on a medication that did cause heartburn. Oh my gosh. And I, you know, I was having trouble breathing, but I wasn't sure that it was, had anything to do with my body. I thought it had to do with sort of the way I was reacting to the foods and stuff, mm -hmm. you know? So, and I, that was somewhat confirmed by the second doctor who ultimately became my allergist that I went to. He was, he was the guy that was the most sensible and, you know, he had some theories, um, but he was willing to, you know, not overly medicate me. And he, you know, both of them put me on a nasal, you know, just using, um, you know, the nasal irrigation. Like a nasal rinse. Like a nasal rinse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And which I continue to this day. So the very first doctor said not food allergies and they she suggested was... mold and um, yeast, yeast. And, and wanted to treat you for COPD and gave you a medication for that. Yes. And, and then, then you said this, why did you check with a different doctor? I checked with a different doctor because I was, first of all, losing weight mm. about two pounds a week. So I, and when I asked her, you know, I said, I need a nutritionist. Do you have a nutritionist that you can recommend? And she was like, no. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I felt like, um, I needed a nutritionist to help me, um, get through this. And I mean, I was like in whole foods crying when some poor clerk saw me and said, can I help you? And I'm like, can you help? I hope you can help me. <laughs> right. So he said, Oh, I, we, one of my colleagues has the same problem that you, you know, this yeast situation and they, and she recommended this book. I don't know if it's coming okay. up in reverse, but anyway, it's yeah. the Candida control cookbook was one of the books. And this young lady, she walked me around and helped me pick out food. Now, one of the things I did react as, uh, allergic to was mugwort. Now, I thought that was something that happened in Harry Potter. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't I've it. literally never gone to the store looking for mugwort. So, or trying to avoid it. Or trying to avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it in things? 
it's a it's a it's a, it's a shrub. Okay. And, and apparently they do use it for acupuncture, according to one of my good friends. Okay. But most of my acupuncturists have actually use steel needles. So. so not in your traditional. Not in your traditional, food. but when you get into the fancy Dan health food, no wheat world, uh -huh. you will find it as okay. an ingredient. Okay. But that was not my problem. Okay. I could avoid mugwort very easily. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, so, you know, the answer is at the end of the day, and this is a long way to get here, is that a lot of times you just have to figure it out for yourself, you know? Right. And these things, and they, and you're, you do change. Just one little flashback with all of this was to when I was seven years old and my dentist put me on a no sugar, no starch diet. I can never look at uh, rice puffs the same, quite honestly. Oh, yeah. But, you know, and, and milk, I was very limited in the amount of milk I could have because it has a lot of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. um, fruits, very limited amount of fruit that I was allowed, this is for a year when I was seven years old, because That's he so said hard. my mouth was too acidic and it was eating, I, you know, you don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it was, eat, it was eating out the insides of my teeth oh my as gosh. a child. And so he put me on that diet. Basically, that is the diet that I adhere to now. So when you say the word diet, do you, are you referencing like something specific um, or are you just referring to a the way I eat? Okay. Well, it's the way, it's the way I eat, but it yeah. is just like, you know, basically when they talk about the yeast free, mold free diet, mm -hmm. it's this specific thing and people are, you know, I know other people who did not, who have had different problems that have been put on that regime, uh, which, because basically it was causing their body to react. Um, and to that, and I mean, there are a lot of people, we have a lot of yeast and stuff in our bodies. Right. Yeah. And so basically, apparently the way you eat can exacerbate your own internal conditions. Your own production of that your own yeast. production. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Well, in, in any event, uh, you know, I was also told not to drink wine or beer. Yeah. And I looked at that as sort of a suggestion, mm -hmm. quite honestly. But um, then as time went by, I actually have, as you know, adopted that position. Yeah. I don't, and, I, and, and they're like, if you want to uh, drink, drink vodka. Oh. And I'm like, that that's not why I drink. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's not that. So that basically over time and even right in the beginning, um, I was not, I was maybe having a glass of Prosecco once a week or something, mm -hmm. but I had cut back completely and was not, um, not drinking that much. And then as I began to socialize more with this new situation, I like wine. I, I used to like wine anyway, but I have to feel also that that affected when I stopped drinking for periods of time. When I went back, I was much, I didn't like it as well. Right. And so like, 
fear went away after a short period where I wasn't drinking. And so when I went back to taste it, I said, oh, yeah, this isn't, this isn't the right thing for me to be doing. And the same thing happened then with, with wine, as you know. Because you've been, you haven't drank wine in about two years now. So do you, have you felt a difference? In no, the- it's only actually been, unbelievably, it's only been a year. Oh God, it feels like forever. Because <laughs> 2020 lasted forever. forever. <laughs> yeah. So it's only been 2020 that, that, that. This, okay. I started in just like COVID-19. And you remember the 19th stands for 2019. Um, I started going through these changes in 2019. Related to the alcohol. Related to the alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, we've talked a lot about like what you've eliminated and you cannot eat, but you are a phenomenal cook and um, highly coveted at your daughter's homes with the children. (laughs) Everybody loves your cooking. Everybody loves your food. And you've started a blog to share your recipes. I have. Yes. So tell me more about what ingredients you do use and your style of cooking, because I'm telling you when a plate of Deborah food comes your way, it's beautiful and colorful and flavorful. It's, it's not dull at all. And, um, there's a lot of variety and you're totally, it's more than satisfied, you know, um, we're licking the plates and going back overeat. You can even overeat on this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So let's talk about your style of cooking and your, you know, how, what you're doing and how it's all playing out. Well, I've read a book called In Defense of Food. Michael Pollan. Michael Pollan. Yes. Yeah. I highly recommend it for every human being that ingests food. Food. (laughs) He does. He hasn't done a child's version yet, but really he should. No, he did do a short version. Yeah. It's called "Eat What Your Grandmother Would Eat." Okay, or something like that. I gave it to you guys, but anyway, the answer is <clears throat> lots and lots of fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. I mean, fruit again. I have to be more careful. Uh, than most people on the fruit front, but lots and lots and lots of vegetables. Um, And not necessarily the highly starchy vegetables. I don't do very much of those. We have starchy vegetables on the weekend, usually as a treat, Mm -hmm. but it's like eating candy. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I have discovered that probably, I, I don't think veganism is for me. I can't leave, uh, I mean, I need my, I need my protein. And I think most people in my age group also, they need a robust amount of protein. Mm-hmm. But by robust, I mean three to four ounces at a meal. I don't mean half of the cow. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you eat meat, you eat a ton of different vegetables. I even, uh, I started dating a man at the beginning of this revelation about needing to change the way I ate. And I made a list of all the vegetables I could think of. It's three or four columns, something like that. And we were on a long ride and I said, do you eat? Oh gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Starting with artichokes and ending up with zucchini. Right. Everything in between. Do you eat this? And I had yes, no, maybe comments. Okay. I still have that list. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah. Cause you know, 
if you're gonna, you have to at least accommodate the people that you're in a relationship with, I figure. Yeah, cooking for them, yeah. Yeah, and but the other thing is, you know, basically it gives me a good idea what's available as well. But the other thing that definitely went by the wayside is anything, this is Michael Pollan. Again, if you can't pronounce it and it doesn't grow in the backyard, mm -hmm don't eat it. Right. No. So when people tell me that um, citric acid is lemon juice, when you look at a bottle and it says citric acid mm -hmm. and they say, well, that's just lemon juice. I can't tell you the number of times I've heard this from people. It's just lemon juice. I said, uh, no. It has nothing to do with a lemon or the juice of a lemon. It is a chemical. It's made in the laboratory. It's cheaper than lemons for them to add. Mm -hmm. It serves the same function as lemon right. juice, but it is not lemon juice. So like, don't kid yourself. Lemon juice is lemon juice. That's right. And if they put lemon juice in that bottle, believe me, they're going to tell you because right. it costs them a lot of money and right. they're going to charge you a lot of money. So but they're going to tell you if it's lemon juice in there. You don't have to worry about secrets on that front. Right. But what I find are a lot of other little, you know, tricks of the trade, you know, calcium, this or that, you know, with some, and you're like, well, what is, what did, where did that come from? And, and I've done a lot of research too, when I see something on a label and believe me, I'm very fussy about when I go off of that. So it's hard to find artichoke hearts, for example. Mm -hmm. Now this is a personal preference, but I, it's very rare that I buy anything in a can. Right. Um, so I know we'll go for the jars rather than plastic or jugs or cans or whatever. And I'm not one of those people. I, you know, I'm trying to eliminate plastic as much as possible. Right. But I have not achieved it in the same way that I have achieve getting rid of things that make me cough. Right. So a now lot of label reading and food. a lot of just fresh food. Fresh food. And that's in since I have been retired the last 10 years, I'm my, I actually feel better than I did when I was working because I would have an apple as a snack. That was the other thing the doctor told me eat your fruits as an appetizer, mm -hmm. not as a dessert. Now I tend to ignore that and I ignore it at my peril, quite honestly, uh -huh. you know? So, cause I, they're sweet. I like to eat things at the end of a meal that are sweet. Right, right. But it, it, I do have reactions to it. And what the reactions, even now I get reactions to things. And it's somewhat the order that I eat, but no, I don't, you know, basically I make my own. One of the first things that I noticed was the ingredients of the cheap chicken broth in the grocery store. Monosodium glutamate in some cases. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, if you look at that, it didn't just, it didn't just get squeezed out of the chicken. <laughs> You know, right. that did not happen. Right. So, you know, I make my own broth with, and with very few exceptions, if I am traveling and I'm in someone's home, then there are certain brands that you can look at and they really don't have any bad ingredients in them. Right. But they're few and far between. So, you know, I will buy those, but generally speaking, I make my own broth chicken or beef or whatever it is yeah and you've made your own almond milk yeah i make my own almond milk if you look at the if you look at what's in almond milk you know you will see that there's a lot of interesting things in most of them 
not all of them. I have found brands, but they're expensive. And right. at the end of the day, it gets expensive. Right. Too. So yeah, I, and, and the other thing that milk products, that was one of the things too, that they said, don't eat milk products. It's really interesting. We just watched What the Health. Yes. <laughs> um, which actually, Tessa, my daughter, for those of you that don't know our family, did some research to fact check it. And she has this link that goes minute by minute that fact wow. checks all of the statements of the movie, the claims and that sort of thing. So I just thought that was really interesting because so much of our marketing and advertising that comes from these companies, they're receiving checkoff money and federal funding yes. from the growers yeah. and that sort of thing. So, you know, we have to give equal airtime to these things. So, you know, we watched What the Health, we were completely appalled and, um, I was proud of my kid for fact checking it. Yeah. How, but when you were referencing dairy, there's like 30% of the population only has the correct enzymes Time. to digest milk. Wow. So that's interesting. It's fascinating. And I learned that yeah. through my master's certificate in gerontology. So the yeah. older we get, the less likely we are to have those enzymes that yeah. we need to digest wow. dairy products. Um, but in general, across the board, like, you know, we're just not really designed uh, to do it at any age, really, but then especially as we grow older, yes, it's reduced significantly. Mm -hmm. So just something to pay attention to and be aware of, which I think is what the whole point of this whole conversation is about, yeah. is you really honed in on I ate this. How did I feel? Right. You know, right. What, what happened? How did I feel? And starting to pay attention, you went and sought medical care. They tried to put you on an acid reflux medicine. They tried to treat you for COPD, you know, and ultimately right. what, how many medications are you on now? None. None. And how old so, are you today? I'm 75 as we speak. As we speak. <laughs> as and we speak. You're like an anomaly in the healthcare system. Yeah. I, I, I recently had uh, a, a silly fall, totally my own fault and not tripping over anything or any other thing. I was backing up uh, and backed up over a place where there was no step mm -hmm. or no so, and, but, but again, you know, I, I managed to fall correctly, if you will. And so, but I called the doctor's office anyway, just to say this should be in your records. Right. Anyway. Right. Especially as you know, as people get older, falling can be a very dangerous thing. Right. And um, so it, I was checking to make sure that they didn't feel like I needed to go in for an x-ray or anything. Uh, but it was, it was a day after the fall, but it was like, because I know that they don't do anything. If you, if you get a fracture in your rib, they don't do anything. Right. So they give you painkiller, but I was not in any pain. Right. So, um, but I just wanted to call and make sure. And the woman says, okay, what medications are you on? And I said, if you're looking for blood thinner, I'm not on any blood thinners. And she saw my chart because it was in, a, in my own clinic. Right. She says, well, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not on anything. And I'm yeah. like, no, no. And that is, th that is a natural fact. Good for medications they can fix things and people need medications. Mm -hmm. But if you don't need them, you know, then that's, you get the blood test, you find out. So for right, example, right. one of my blood tests said that I was low in B12. And my doctor, and as you may recall, my mother from yep. Paris um, was getting B12 shots. Yeah. So um, he said, well, let's try this. 
why don't you just take some vitamin B12 and see how that goes? So I do take supplements related to things that have shown up in my tests. I had, no one can explain why or what's good or bad about it, but I, a couple of times I've had, you know, my tests have indicated um, that I'm, oh, there goes the printer. We're <laughs> <laughs> um, in an I'm, office. <laughs> yes, we're in an office. Um, <laughs> that my white blood cell count was low. Right. And um, so I asked the doctor what to do about that. Because as we all may recall, white blood cells are really good for your immune reaction, immune system. Right, immune yeah. System. You need it. You right, need you need them. Suckers. Yeah. They jump right on it. Whatever you got coming in, they jump on it. So... I started taking zinc, a supplement of zinc. Okay. See, because what they do know about zinc is that it shortens, if you get a cold, it's going to shorten the length of time that you have the cold. And to some extent, it helps you from getting a bad cold, for example. Right. And what they're finding now, when, from what I can read with um, the COVID-19, is that they're recommending zinc as a vitamin that helps your immune system, right. which is what takes care of people. And I definitely want people to do their own research and get their own absolutely advice yeah. from their own yeah. physicians. Even my not... doctor didn't tell me to do this. So right. This isn't even a doctor recommended thing. Right. It's just what I decided to do and it hasn't hurt me in right. any way. I and, think, yeah, the big yeah. takeaway is just paying attention and being aware to your of your body and right. yeah. honoring it. And, you know, just because a doctor prescribes you something, there may be another way. Um, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I That's something that... I mean, and it's like, I don't want to encourage people to, you know, throw out their doctor's advice, but a second opinion, mm -hmm. um, different sources, I think right. are really good too. And it's just like um, different resources other than the pure medical community. Right. You know? um, well, and you're in Canada um, right now, on the CDC website, if yes. you look at the top chronic illnesses that most people are being medicated for, and then how to prevent chronic illness, all of the how to prevent chronic illness suggestions are tied to behavior modifications and lifestyle yes. modifications. Well, great. Yeah. So, then, yeah. Yes. And as a as sort of an addendum to this whole thing and this following up on this particular part of the conversation, again, back in my early 60s, late 50s, I noticed I was having basically trouble getting, if the phone rang and I had to get out of bed to answer it, I, I would probably miss the call. Wow. Because I was very stiff and I... We froze. So we'll be back with you shortly. Okay, You're back. back. Okay. <laughs> so you felt very stiff and it was hard to just jump out of bed and- I couldn't just jump out of bed without, you know, a lot of, uh, oh my God, you know, right. and I'm like thinking I'm way too young for that. Right. So I got myself a personal trainer. And you were not, you have always subscribed in general to a Weight Watcher lifestyle. Yes. Or so you and I started that adventure together as well. Right. And After I mean, you, that was 20 yeah. plus years ago. So at the time when you were in your 50s, early 60s, it wasn't a weight issue that no, was. No, it was just your muscles. 
Yeah, it was just like basically sleeping in a position, you know, waking up from being, you know, you, you're not moving around when you're sleeping that much. And, you know, things kind of stiffen up, Yeah, you know, and, but I knew I needed, and now I honestly get out of bed without any problem. <laughs> you probably had inflammatory issues that were- I'm sure, I, I'm that, sure it was related. Yeah. I'm sure it was related. And yeah. I had the best, actually, I, I have a great physical, I mean, I have a great personal trainer now. Um, at that time, I actually had someone who was, she was a yoga teacher and a Pilates instructor. And we did things with weights, but we also just did things with making the body work. Right. So, so important. Well, yeah. I think this has been really great. I think it's been uh, inform informational, informative, helpful, <laughs> something. Yeah. <clears throat> I just well, hope if, if, if people think they're having a problem with, with their body, then they ought to look at what they're putting into it. Yeah. That's kind of the bottom line is what yeah. are you eating? What are you putting and in your face? So my, you know, my, my orientation is um, obviously it's, it's not a nut free situation, mm -hmm. uh, but it's like, I've run into a fair number of people who have the problem with that I had with vinegar. So I'm not the only one with that out there. And yeah. it actually shows up on the yeast free diet. Okay. The mold and yeast free because vinegars are made with a thing called a mother. And basically it's mold. Mm. You know, I love that mold. It's delicious. And it yeah. works for my body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it works for a lot of people. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you know, that's definitely where it's so important to figure your own things out and not just, but if, if you're looking for recipes that use, and I'm, I'm willing to do cheats too. You know, frozen vegetables are a great gift um, to people who don't live on a farm. Right, <laughs> yeah. Vegetables, yes. you know, so. Well, this but, has yeah. been great. I am going to, um, when I push this up to YouTube, I'll include your blog so people can find your recipes. And I don't know if on Facebook, um, your, your profile probably is not public, but the pictures are spectacular of the food. That oh, you yes. Well, that is true. And that, th that I need to move those over to uh, the, the Curious Senior. Yes. That's Curious Senior 1S. Curious Senior 1S.com. Well, thank yeah. you, Mom. Mwah! I'm going to hit stop record. Okay. <laughs> All right.